morning you guys welcome back to another vlog i am kind of a mess this morning i have a, an appointment that i'm not excited about uh that i've been dreading for a very long time and uh, i have to get a root canal i think in another vlog i shared about like going to my consultation or whatever and today is the actual day of the procedure and i just my biggest fear in life is uh, the dentist, basically. So I'm not excited, but I am grateful that I'm gonna be able to get it done and it's gonna be behind me and no longer something that I have to worry about. And we're staying positive today. But I have Indy with me, Wilder's at school, and Drew just left to go uh, run some errands and then he's gonna pick Wilder up from school. And then I'm gonna snag the car and head to my appointment. Um, I have a bunch of breast milk in the fridge for Indy so that Drew can be with her while I'm there because it's like an emergency appointment because they couldn't get me in for quite a while and I was like, I need this done. Like now my tooth has been such an issue for the last two weeks. I have been taking so much Tylenol and ibuprofen and it is not something that I usually do, especially not in the quantity that I've had to do it just to maintain like my normal existence as a human it is so if you've ever had a toothache like this you know what i mean when it's just all consuming i told drew that i would rather be in labor again <laughs> than continue to have this tooth pain so i'm very excited to have it taken care of but also very nervous um tomorrow is wilder's last day of school before he is on like winter break and we wanted to make sure that we had like a little gift basket to put together for both of his teachers. Um, and one of the things that we're gonna do is make like a mini holiday loaf for them. Um, in one of my other vlogs, I talked about these little tins that I found at Home Goods, and they're the stinking cutest. And so we're just gonna make um, some like ginger, like warm, spicy, kind of cinnamony loaf banana bread type situation um, and do many ones and they're gonna be gluten-free and vegan so um, I want to make them with Wilder because that's kind of the whole point right of you like making a gift for your teacher um, I really want him to be like hands-on in the whole process but I just want to be prepared whenever we do actually do it because we're probably gonna have to make them after my root canal and like I don't know how I'm gonna feel every my mom's had a root canal and she told me that like it's not a big deal afterwards. Like the recovery and the pain isn't super intense and that she felt fine after. So I'm hoping that I'll still be able to bake these and if not, then him and Drew can do it and it'll be fine. So I'm gonna get all of the ingredients. I have all the ingredients out on the shelf back here or on the counter, but I just need to pre-measure them so that when he gets home, we can just like quickly do it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. mom to have a turn yes thanks okay what are you making butter bread well i'm making we baking bread who are you baking bread for i'll be sour oh wow okay i'm crying up my mouth oh my mouth is so numb i can't even look at myself when i'm talking I just got done with my root canal and first of all, the guy who my dentist referred me to was absolutely amazing. Like it made all the difference to have a provider who was so like, he just, he held me like a little, you know, newborn baby. He was so sweet and just like gentle and patient and calm and like, he just was the absolute best. Um, second, the, the do you hear my lisp? Second, the procedure itself, like pain wise, actual pain, like physical pain, two out of 10. 
mental, the mental game, like so fucking hard. I was shaking. My hands were shaking. My legs were shaking. My jaw was shaking. Literally, it took everything in me not to have a full blown panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> like the the mental game of it I don't even know so the part that hurts the most obviously is the local anesthetic that they put in and oh it feels so weird to talk with my num mouth numb I'm probably gonna not talk very much for the next few hours the local anesthetic is the part that hurts the most because there are four he did four different things I don't even know what the needles actually look like but there were four of them and they were in four different places. And the fourth one was the one that hurt the most. The fourth one he like put inside. I feel like I went inside of my fucking tooth. Um, and then the mental game that I'm gonna swallow my tongue. I literally was like, I'm gonna. This is how it. This is how I die. Cause I'm gonna swallow my tongue and die. <laughs> like it's all mental. I just. It was the biggest like mental game I've ever. <laughs> like I just had a baby and like it was harder than having a. <laughs> Maybe. And it just didn't hurt at all. Like, once the anesthetic in it, you can't feel anything. It's just the sound and, like, the pressure. Like, him, like, pushing on my face to, like, hold. Like, he needed to, like, push down and, like, you know, get in there. And it's just, like, oh, it's just all the noises. Like, the grinding. Like, something grinding on your teeth. And the scraping and, like, all those little sounds. Oh, my God. And, like, right now, I can see my tongue in this camera I'm looking at my tongue but in my head it feels like I'm about to swallow it it literally feels like my tongue is gonna fall down my throat and I'm gonna die so oh my god I'm so happy it's over and now I mean it's this is over I have to go get a crown on my tooth in about a month but this part is over <sighs> everything's so numb <laughs> okay I'm gonna drive home now bye I've been trying to put away clothes in um, the room with Indy. It's hard because she naps in here, so I can't really do tasks in here. Drew was nice enough to like really clean up the room, um, but a lot of the stuff that's left is like my stuff that I need to put away and that needs to be organized by me. So I've been trying to do that this morning. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about sleeping today. Um, I've gotten some questions about like newborn sleep, how Indy is doing with sleep, and that kind of stuff. Um, so Indy is honestly an awesome sleeper. Both of our kids have been really good sleepers, but Indy just woke up from her first nap of the day. Um, she took a really awesome nap. Her first nap is usually the best nap where I don't have to come in and rock her back to sleep. She'll wake up, but she puts herself back to sleep during her first nap. And I don't know why the first nap of the day is like that, but um, it usually, if she's going to put herself back to sleep, the first nap is usually when it happens. So she slept for two hours. Um, we have the snoo bassinet and um, that's where she sleeps whenever we put her down for a nap. I wanted to give you guys like a sleep update and just kind of walk you through what our schedule looks like and kind of what we try to do during the um, first few months of like newborn life. What we ultimately try to foster is just routine. Like we don't have an actual schedule where it's like at 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock and two o'clock you go down for a nap. We just try to foster like uh, the same routine for nap time as much as we can. Um, so for us, that just includes making the room super dark. You saw me opening up these shades. I'll link them down below. They're from Amazon. They're paper shades and they're the best like $20 you can spend um, for helping your baby get really good quality sleep, especially like the newborn phase. Babies tend to just like sleep anywhere. Um, but once they get past like three months, four months, five months, that's when I personally find it's super nice to have a really, really, really dark room. We also use a 
sound machine. We have the Hatch Baby sound machine in both of the kids' rooms. And I really like it as a long-term sound machine. Like, if you just need a sound machine for a baby, frankly, anything will do. Um, but we bought one that we really, really loved that was a great, like, white noise machine. Um, but it ended up breaking. And so we got the Hatch one for Wilder's room first. And I love it because it's been helping us... Um, with his toddler sleep. So now he's waking up, he has like full freedom of movement that you don't have to worry about with a newborn. So we've been working with him on staying in his room until like 7 a.m. Um, even if he wakes up, he can stay in his room and play and um, go back to sleep if he wants. But if he wakes up and his sound machine is still uh, playing white noise and the color is red, then he needs to stay in his room. And we have it set so that at seven o'clock, the machine uh, starts playing bird sounds and the light turns green. So at that point he knows that if he wants to come out of his room, he can come out. And if not, he can still stay in his room, but it's just an indicator for him that he can come out. Anyway, it's just a long way of saying, if you don't want to spend the money on the Hatch sound machine, that's totally fine. Any white noise machine will do. But if you're looking for a really good one to have that you can like invest a little bit more on the front end and have for many years, and it is really helpful whenever your baby is a little older, um, highly recommend it. We have been loving it. So we have the white noise machine. I also turn on a um, humidifier for her. Our air is so dry here and your baby will sleep so much better if they can actually breathe <laughs> through their nose um, and not have to breathe through their mouth. If you notice that your baby is sleeping with their mouth open, um, it can mean a bunch of different things, but one thing you can do is turn on a humidifier um, and hopefully help their sinuses. So we have that going. We also put her in a swaddle whenever we put her down for a bedtime or a nap. Um, we use the Ollie swaddle. I really like it because it goes just below their shoulders um, and the bottom is just open. So there's no risk of, um, it's like hip dysplasia approved uh, because some swaddles can squeeze their hips too much, which can restrict like growth in their hips and stuff like that, especially if you're using it at every um, nap time. So I really like the Ollie Swaddle for that, and she really likes the Swaddle. Some babies are not a fan, um, but she is a big fan. As soon as we put the Swaddle on her, she's very calm. Um, I also like the Love to Dream Swaddle, which is the one where they can have um, their hands kind of up and out, but it's still inside of a Swaddle. And we transitioned, I think we started using that one with Wilder when he was too strong to like, he could pull his hands up in the Swaddle and he would wake up from his nap with his hand like up by his face. Um, so I tried it on her once and she wasn't a huge fan of it. She was still really young. I think she was only like two weeks old or something and she did not like it, did not take a good nap at all with it. Um, so I'll probably try again soon, but anyways, we use the Ollie swaddle. The snoo does come with a swaddle and we do like double swaddle her. So we put her in the Ollie swaddle and then put her inside of the snoo swaddle. But the snoo swaddle is really more just a sleep sack. It doesn't really do, in my opinion, it doesn't really do anything uh, as far as like swaddling is concerned. It has a Velcro strap in the middle and then a sack that goes around it. It isn't very snug or secure. It just kind of keeps them in the snoo. So for safety reasons, I put her inside of the snoo swaddle so that if the snoo is oscillating, um, she's not like rolling around in it because that obviously wouldn't be cool. So we put her inside of both, um, which is fine. It's not bulky at all. And it's actually approved by, um, oh. and uh, snoo, like the company snoo has said that it is, uh, sleep safe and totally fine to do that. So that's what we do. Um, and what we follow is just wake windows and sleep cues. So if she is starting to show signs of being sleepy, if she starts to yawn um, or like rubbing her face, if she starts to get kind of fussy and we know that she's fed and dry and like has played a ton, um, then we start to pay attention to see if she is sleepy. Hi baby. So anyway, we pay attention to her um, wake windows and um, for her age, we like have noticed some, you know, every baby is going to be different, but usually the first, like I think up until four to six weeks range anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. 
Um, and she tends to be between an hour to an hour and a half. She starts to show signs that she's getting sleepy and fussy. So as soon as she wakes up, I feed her. Um, I try to do full feedings. So rather than snacking kind of, you know, throughout her wake window, I try to do a full feeding at the beginning. Sometimes she takes both sides and um, will seem to get a full feeding and not be hungry again until after her nap. Um, other days she'll eat on one side and then kind of stop and not be interested in the need to eat again before she goes down for a nap. So it just depends. But I try to encourage like eating at the beginning of the wake window, playing a lot during the middle, good burp, and um, then uh, going straight down for a nap after that. Um, and we've just found that that routine works really, really well um, for encouraging good feedings, good naps, and making sure that we're paying attention to like what we're doing with her whenever she is awake. So when I put her down, we do the whole routine, like I swaddle her or whatever, and I'll put her down into the snoo. Um, like I said, her first nap is usually the best one. That is usually the one. If she's going to have a two hour nap, it's going to happen at her first nap or in, at her nap that's like around 12 or one, like the middle of the day nap. Um, those are the two best ones. And then the end of the day is when it's a little less likely that she'll sleep on her own for two hours. A lot of people refer to it as the witching hour, um, which is, you know, kind of a negative connotation, but it's true. Sometimes there's just, you know, it's like you've done everything that you know to do right and they're still just unhappy and that's totally fine. It might not even be that they're unhappy. It's that they're crying and fussy and not wanting to go to sleep. Um, which when you have a baby, the only way they can communicate how they feel is to usually cry. And even if they're feeling sad or angry or sleepy or frustrated or, you know, hungry, whatever it is, they make the same noises. So, you know, she's a tiny person having her own tiny personal human experience and... Uh, it makes the end of the day sometimes confusing for us because all we know to do is like what we do during the day when they cry and sometimes they respond with a completely different reaction than we're used to. So during that time, I still do the same routine. I still follow the wake windows and swaddle her and put her down, but she might wake up after 45 minutes or 30 minutes and sometimes 20 minutes, you know, whatever it is. Um, for her, it's usually 45 minutes on the nose. She'll wake up and, you know, some of the days she'll go back to sleep. Other days I have to come in and hold her and rock her and she'll go back to sleep. So basically no matter how it goes for her, like on her own, um, we try to encourage a two hour nap window. So if she's able to put herself back to sleep and, um, you know, doesn't seem to be bothered and doesn't like cry, um, for an extended period of time, like, you know, when your baby starts to cry, you know, the difference of like, oh, you're awake and going back to sleep and like, you're awake and you need me. Um, so we are not doing sleep training. We don't leave her to cry it out at, by any means. Um, we do pause for a second, like when she wakes up, if she starts to cry, we pause for a second. The snoo oscillates. So if she does start crying, the snoo will start to um, move a little bit faster and the white noise gets a little louder. And so having that um, mechanism like built into her sleeping arrangement is really helpful because if she does start to cry, the movement comforts her and she calms down and um, that's really, really helpful in knowing the difference between like you're awake and trying to go back to sleep and you're awake and you need to be held or you need to be changed or you need to eat. Um, so highly recommend this new, we had it with Wilder and it was fantastic. So we used it again with her and we love it. You don't actually have to have it turned on if you don't want to, you can just use it as a bassinet, which we also do. Um, and yeah, love that. But anyway, if she wakes up after 45 minutes, I will come in and just scoop her up out of the snoo and rock her back to sleep in my arms. She usually goes to sleep within a couple seconds of um, waking up. Or if I need to not be in the room and we need to be like doing something in the house, uh, I will just wear her. I love my Solly baby wrap. I've talked about it a million times and I've started using our ring sling a lot more. She seems to really love the ring sling. Wilder wasn't a huge fan. Um, so I tried it with her and she snuggles up and I'm not kidding. She, as soon as I put her in there, she, I mean, it's like seconds and she's asleep again. So we've really been loving that. She does take a binky. Um, we have been consistently kind of giving it to her at first. She wasn't super into it, uh, but I really love the binkies. I think binkies are super helpful for, um, calming a baby and 
especially with like whenever Drew has her. I uh, I think binkies are fantastic. I know it's one of the, another thing that like is kind of a you know everything with babies is mixed opinions and mixed advice and whatever. So do what works for you and like don't don't feel bad about doing something that works for your family if somebody else doesn't think it works for their family. You don't have to use binkies if you don't want to. But I personally love a binky. Um, she really likes the bibs binkies. When she was smaller, she was not super into the bibs ones. She liked the ma'am binkies, M-A-M, I think. Um, she took to that one really well. Now that one's like too small for her and she's not super interested. And the other ones that we loved are the Hevia natural rubber ones. They have the orthodontic tip that like turns upwards. She liked those a lot when she was, um, I say when she was a baby, when she was a less old baby than she is now, she liked those too. So this was a very long winded explanation for, we use darkness, we use white noise, we use swaddle and we use sucking. Um, and we use movement. Those are all the things that add up the ni a nice equation for um, helping your baby sleep really well and just paying attention to her wake windows and how she's acting and seeing when she gets fussy. We try and do tummy time whenever she is awake as often as we can, but you know, newborns, sometimes they love tummy time, sometimes they don't. Um, both of mine haven't been huge, huge fans, especially in the first three months. Uh, but there's a billion different ways that you can uh, try to encourage tummy time. And it's one of the most helpful things, especially uh, just for like, I mean, there's so many different things, but muscle tension is really the number one thing that we have been focusing on. She has uh, shown that she has some tension on like this side of her neck. And because of that, she tends to turn her head to one direction. We always encourage her to turn her head the other direction. Like when I lay her down for a nap, I turn it the other direction. When I'm uh, baby wearing, I turn her head to the other direction. Wilder is having some big feelings right now. He is just, I don't know, he's just got a lot of emotions. So I just popped Indy into the sling and I'm gonna take him outside to get some, I think, much needed fresh air. We'll see if he wants to or not. He might not want to. Are you raking? What? What? <laughs> Slide. Woo -hoo! You gonna go down the blue slide now? Starting to rain. I don't know why Wilder wasn't a huge fan of the ring sling. I assume because I didn't put him in it very well, honestly. Because it was the first time that I had tried to baby wear. Is it starting to rain on your head? Uh, but she loves the sling. I actually think she prefers the sling to the other wraps. Um, but anyway, it's starting to rain, so we should probably head back inside but we needed to shake some jitters out man sometimes you just gotta get outside he was just upset and crying constantly which is fine like crying is totally fine but he just we couldn't put a finger on the emotion we kept giving him words to assign what emotion it was and he just didn't he didn't really know so outside we go to run it out <laughs> but we don't want to stay in the rain let's go say bye yeah say bye guys and Andy's always really happy laying on her changing mat for some reason. So this is where I'll read her books before we go to bed. I wanted just to tell you, and it didn't take long, the way I feel about you is a kind of a song. <laughs> yes. If you're looking for good books to read to either, I mean, newborns or honestly anywhere up to like 12 months old, these are by far our most used books by um, Sandra Boynton. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, Sandra Boynton books are absolutely amazing. These are so, so nice for the first like year of your baby's life. Wilder still reads these. He's over two and he still loves them, but especially during the first year or so, highly recommend these. We also give her a lovey whenever we're putting her to sleep. Um, just to start doing that. She doesn't really care right now, um, but it's more just like a habit that I like to do. Just another sleep cue. Not that. Newborns really don't need sleep cues, <laughs> um, but it's nice for when she's a little bit older. Huh? And then I turn out the lights so you won't be able to see us anymore, but I turn out the lights. I leave our diffuser on over here with a red light. Red light is always really nice 
whenever you're doing bedtime because it's not super bright. So I just got done holding Indy while she slept for the second part of her nap. She took um, the first half by herself and then she woke up and Drew was able to comfort her for um, a little bit and then um, needed me to come in to uh, finish comforting her and she went back to sleep. So everybody is in Wilder's room right now playing and I have been trying to get a task done for forever that I'm gonna try and do right now. See if I can quickly get it done. Oh my god. Let me go one knock. Pull through. Even what? Brax is in here. Whoa. Where is it? This is just a plastic bag. Mom's gonna put some clothes in here. Do you want me to move? Am I in your way? So while Indy's hanging out with dad, I'm going to go and clean up the kitchen and cook dinner for the first time in like, when's the last time I cooked dinner? Go put that back, please. What's that made out of? Yeah. <laughs> when's the last time I cooked dinner? <laughs> Can you remember the last time I made dinner? No. <laughs> Indy, when's the last time I made you dinner? What is he trying to open? Something. <laughs> He's trying to open the jar with his knife. Is it opening? Mama, help it. Do you think your knife opens jars? Yeah. Hmm. Why don't you show me how you think a jar is opened? Needless to say, I haven't made dinner in uh, quite a while. So, but this week it's like I wanted to set the intention of getting to like getting all of our groceries uh like a list made out because of recipes that we've picked drew's really good at just like making things with whatever we have uh and i need a recipe to follow i'm not <laughs> very good at cooking so i need a recipe and i need like all the ingredients that are called for in the recipe and so we sat down we got all of our groceries put together um in instacart and had them delivered and the rest we're gonna pick up from sprouts tomorrow so anyway um, I'm making dinner tonight. I'm using one of my favorite um, cookbooks for tonight, the Vegan Instant Pot. My mom got this for us a while ago and she has such good recipes and they're in the Instant Pot, which is like my favorite. And then we picked a bunch of recipes from Lauren Toyota's cookbook, the Vegan Comfort Food Classics. This one is so yummy. These recipes are a little bit more high intense in my opinion. And these are a little bit easier to follow um, for someone like me who isn't like the best cook. It's approximately 10 hours later because <laughs> Andy was not having the uh, sling and then Wilder and Drew got back and blah, blah, blah. So dinner ended up taking a lot longer than I anticipated it to. So what time is it now, Drewby? Both kids are to sleep and we have some peace and quiet to ourselves. It looks like it turned out pretty good. Drew said he tasted it and that it was tasty. He also is the one that ended up making the cornbread because I was panicking. Only one piece of furniture got flipped over during the making of this dinner, and I'm proud to say that. So now we're going to sit and eat this and watch The Witcher. There's a new season of The Witcher out, and I've been waiting for this. Whenever I was pregnant with Indy, I rewatched the first season of The Witcher in anticipation. Yeah, go ahead and eat, baby. In anticipation of um, this season coming out, and I'm so excited. I am obsessed with this show. Leave me a comment and let me know if you guys have watched The Witcher before and if you like it because I think it's one of my, like it might be my top like one to three favorite shows ever.
So we're gonna watch an episode of this, eat our dinner, and end the vlog there. You have to give me your taste taste test results. A plus. Is it? Yes. How much would you pay for it at a restaurant? Eleven fifty. It's pretty good. For chili. That's kind of expensive, chili. Chili's usually like $3.99. <laughs> well, whatever. Thanks. I mean, <laughs> we've been challenging each other to stop like deflecting compliments. Whenever I compliment Drew and whenever he compliments me, we're always both <laughs> just like, yeah, whatever, and say something to negate the compliment. So we've been attempting to not do that. I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today and we will see you in tomorrow's vlog. Bye.